Hey everybody, welcome to my show Friday PM. My name is Luigi Scarcelli. Uh, today we have a very interesting show. We have Greg Arion. He is he's coming to us from Zoom uh, in Rhode Island. Isn't that you're in Rhode Island currently? Yes, uh, I'm in Rhode Island, but my full name, first name, Gregory. Greg is just for Facebook, you know. Right, right. Greg is just for Facebook. Gregory Arion uh, is zooming in from Rhode Island. Gregory is a filmmaker. He's a violinist. Uh, has a very interesting story, and, and we wanted to talk a lot more about it. So instead of me talking too much about myself, uh, I'll let you introduce yourself a little bit. Greg, uh, why don't you start out by telling us, you know, where you were born and kind of that story a little bit. Okay, so actually I'm third generation of musician in our family. So uh, I grew up in a musical, musical family, you know. My, my grandfather, he was... Uh, uh, folk musician and my father was great musician. He just uh, passed away three years ago. He played a uh, very old Eastern and uh, instrument called Kamancha. Uh, I'm Armenian from Azerbaijan. So Armenian origin and uh, the Azerbaijan, it's a, it's, a, it's a republic of former Soviet Union, which disappeared, you know that, in 91. So I grew up in uh, Azerbaijan, being Armenian. Uh, I went to music school for 11 years. They called uh, a special special school for gifted musician, musical school, you know. So I graduated there for 11 years. And uh, after that, uh, I went to conservatory and studied there for five years. Graduated in uh, 1987 and uh, receive a master's degree on music. So, but after that, in just in one year, it start, you know, conflict between Azerbaijan and uh, Armenian uh, people uh, uh, living in Azerbaijan. So the problem was because the uh, rising issues over Nagorno-Karabakh, which is historical Armenian uh, territory and pop populated by mostly Armenian, like like 95 percent. So what happens? They start they start doing uh, so-called I mean uh, continue doing genocide, and they start killing Armenians in uh, Baku in Sumgai. That's the second uh, uh, city in uh, uh, Azerbaijan. So they start killing Armenians. So we have no choice. We have to uh, flee. We fled from there, and uh, so we stay uh, in Armenia for a couple couple years. And you know that earthquake happened in Armenia uh, back to uh, 1988. That's the year we escaped from Azerbaijan. So we went to Armenia, and in Armenia, uh, it was very hard situation. And my my mom just heard that uh, USA government accepting uh, Armenian refugees from Azerbaijan. And that way we apply for that. And uh, after two years, probably in 91, uh, we came to USA. So that's the, in, in shortly I can describe that. But uh, after that, um, so all my, our families, uh, we came here. And uh, uh, after that, uh, I went I went back to already uh, not Soviet Union because Soviet Union collapsed in '91. I went back and uh, in in uh, Russia actually, and I, I I was working in orchestras, you know, symphony orchestra for many years. Then, because of family situation, I, I had to stay there until I was coming back and forward, you know. But I, 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 I was working in Moscow Symphony Orchestra as a concert mess. I played the concerts, all that stuff. But I feel that something, uh, it's not a place where I, where I want to uh, stay. You know, I always was uh, thinking to, to coming back to U USA. And uh, I had a couple quick questions because we didn't want to go too far too fast. Um, so. Tell, tell the viewers who don't really know, because it is interesting. I have a, a friend of mine, and he's been on the show, uh, from Rwanda. And I think some people even know about the genocide in Rwanda. But it's very interesting that you're almost saying, really, not that much of a similar time. I mean, maybe a decade earlier, 
that was when a lot of this stuff was going on in Armenia that has, uh, you know, has been a very political football here in the U.S. because a lot of uh, people who have a lot of power, I think sometimes the, the prime minister of Turkey, people who don't want that to be that well known have kind of swept this issue under the rug a little bit. Uh, that was a, a pretty big genocide and ethnic cleansing and things that was going on in Armenia by the Turkish, by the Russian. Who? What was that all about a little bit? Oh, uh, sure, yeah. You know, the, the thing is, actually, even today, they still bombard in Armenian territory, not, uh, uh, not Nagorno-Karabakh no more. They took it away from uh, historical Armenia, you know. They took it, like Russia, uh, allies with Turkey and Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan, you know, they, the Azer Azerbaijan people and Turkey, they speak the same language. They're almost the same nation, but two countries. So they on influence of Erdogan and Putin at the same time, because what they try to do, I think, I'm not his, a historian, but I, I'm practitioner. So I see the, what is going on. Some, uh, something going on which uh, uh, actually was exist even 100 years ago when everybody knows about Armenian genocide, right? Mm -hmm. uh, been uh, e execution in uh, Turkey. But let me put this way. Now the same thing is going on in historical Armenian territory. And uh, in, in uh, Armenia, because the, uh, Armenia, you know what they did? The first thing they did, Bolsheviks, like Lenin, Stalin, and uh, Ataturk, you know, the Ataturk, it's of, uh, head of uh, Turkey at that time, they cut all Armenia on a, on a, you know, on a pieces. And they give it that, they give it to Azerbaijan. Like, we have a territory, Nakhchivan and Nagorno-Karabakh, it's always been Armenian population and it's historical part of uh, you know uh, Armenia so they split uh, Armenian territory among uh, Azerbaijan and actually now uh, what is going on now in uh, uh, current days they try to do the same thing as they did 100 years ago but now they try to demo demolish all Armenian uh, Armenians from Armenia yeah. Not Agorni Karabakh, but exactly in Armenia, because the uh, Azeri troops now on Armenian territory, they do bar bar bombardment, they do rocket missile strikes. And uh, what I what I can say, this is because I think the uh, Kremlin and that regime in, in Moscow support, supports that actions. Right. They negotiate with uh, Erdogan, with Turkey, with... Uh, uh azerbaijan president Aliyev, and they try to do that but the problem we have in armenia because they we have a puppet government they run by uh moscow so they do uh things against their own people they do things against armenian people well and th let me ask you that question based on that because uh you know everybody knows about what goes on in the ukraine uh, but they don't know as much about what what you're talking about. And uh, is that, I mean, uh, not that it's not so bad about what go, what goes on with the Ukrainians. We have very much sympathy for them, too. But uh, is it, do you wonder why uh, they became the topic f for everybody to rally behind, yeah. but not you, do you? Exactly. I have answer for that. Uh, because uh, actually the, uh, the war against Ukraine, it, it's a secondary. First, it was against Armenia in two, uh, 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 2020, two years ago. They started the war 44 days. It's last Azerbaijan Turkey aggression against Armenia back to two years ago. And after that, they start doing against Ukraine. But Ukraine have, uh, I think, advantage because their president stands for their own people. Despite what uh, Armenia uh, ha has now, you know, because in Armenia uh, government, they go against the, their own people. They, you know, they they working as uh, how you say that satellites or uh, so they working for Kremlin. They working for Putin. And do you feel like it's uh, it it is almost in that sense that uh, where this kleptocracy, as they call it, right, which is a theft and a corruption that now the Soviet Union still exists, but it's even more behind the hidden curtain. 
and it's with the bribes and the money and the offshore money, because that's probably what you're saying is that the, the puppet government, they're a little bit, you believe, you know, they, they take their orders exactly. from the Kremlin, but it's because exactly. of I money think, and I, bribes. Yes. Yeah. They're selling their own interests, they're selling their interests of our own people for money, yeah. for bribes, right, whatever right. you can say that. Yes, exactly. And uh, that's what happened, because in Armenia, uh, most of our Armenians uh, fled the country for this. Uh, uh, they have in so-called independence, but they're not independent at all. They depend on the uh, Russian uh, regime, of Russian fascist regime. It's, they're doing the same things as Adolf Hitler did in uh, uh, back to 1930s. It's pretty scary. It's Stalin, the too. Was they're, that expanding, not... they're expanding. Uh, you know, um, tensions and expanding, the, uh, they tried to grab the territory. Uh, that's why they, they went to Ukraine, so-called, you know, uh, to help the Russian-speaking people in Ukraine. This, this is nonsense, because even the Russian-speaking people in Ukraine fight against Putin now. So this is nonsense. They, they have no, no such things there. But in Armenia, they always keep Armenia as colonized. They keep as a colony. Right, right. So, it was, well, because that, and I, and that's what I find fascinating. I want to touch on that about, uh, because I do think a lot of people in the U.S. Uh, have a pretty dismal view of Vladimir Putin. They like the Russian people and wish that they had a better leader. Uh, and I know you don't like him, so I thought that would be interesting. We can talk oh, a little this, bit about that. Well, yeah, I got your point. This is not, bec uh, this is, this is not so simple as people think. It's not because uh, of you, what you like, what you dislike. Yeah. I used to live there for many years. I can tell you that regime, they have very powerful propaganda. And this propaganda try to uh, dictate what uh, what people should expect from that. You know, so that they try to tell their, their own people, their, to, to Russians, that everybody enemies, like uh, USA enemy, you know, Germany, everything, all Europe, Everybody's enemy to Russia, so we have to fight. That's what Putin, uh, uh, you know, uh, message. And, uh, and we the, need to uh, fight. Yeah. We need to. We need to control. We need to uh, invade pr to prevent NATO expansion. To prevent so-called. So, so this is racism. Uh, racism. Uh, how you call that? Uh, fury. Yeah, it's the same a, thing as Adolf Hitler uh, right. tried to do. Ethnocentric nationalism, kind of things like that, and. Uh, yeah, but yeah. the problem, even mm -hmm. if somebody overthrown that regime, I don't think any positive uh, sign going to happen. You know why? Uh, yeah, why is that? I can't tell you why. Because the Russian people itself, let's say 75, 85 percent, almost 90, they brainwash. Yeah. They just. They just buying what uh, government telling them. Well, they, they and, believe that. Yeah, and I mean, and they mm -hmm. hate everyone. Believe me. And I think they hate yeah. everyone. They look at the uh, uh, like uh, Western civilization on uh, other nations like a secondary, like a second class. They yeah. discriminate. Well, and I think what's interesting is is that you know, uh, you know, I'm a pretty democratic guy. I'm not a giant fan about Donald Trump. I think. He, t he latched on to some of that same thing that is a very Hitlerian thing, which is the idea that the, the more problems that people have, the more you blame the other people. So the more that uh, he drives Russia outside of, of the national or the international circle of countries, the, the more their country is not good. But he's doing OK. He's rich as everybody, you know, in his inner circle. But then he can take that same situation of the poverty of the Russians and blame it on everybody else. I mean, that's kind of correct, right? It's always the fault of the other countries, is what I think Putin does. Uh, you know, they have a hatred theory. They, they don't like anyone. Yeah. And, and they, they're just talking about itself. But they don't tell the uh, real fact. Like, even if we're talking about Armenian colonized uh, territory, they start doing that not today they start doing that even when uh nikolai tsar was existing uh, before before he was overthrown in uh, 1917 he was practicing the same thing right killing people doing massacre and even uh, he sent a greeting his general uh, sent a greeting to uh uh turkey uh you know at that time to kill an armenian they they braved him them to do that 
And so yeah. looking back to USA, I what? think USA now in very hard situation because they have to act for that all that all that uh, threats which coming from uh, uh, let's say from Russia. I, I guess right. it's nothing else. Oh, not only Russia. I think it's Erdogan also extremely dangerous because they try to he tried to uh, talk with people, uh, Putin to make uh, you know split the territory and between them between Russia and Turkey because over there if you're talking about Asia uh, so-called uh, you know Uzbekistan uh, then Kyrgyzstan and other former uh, uh, Soviet Union Republic they all Turks they speak Turkish language different dialects so he tried to grab everything but he he, he could but if 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 back to your question about USA, I think USA split now, and this is give advantage also to Putin because when we talk about who is good, who is bad, Republican or Democrats, it give him advantage because the USA is, uh, it's divided, and it's divided big way. So uh, 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 every news, every TV channel, for example, I don't have TV uh, no more, but I I watch for news on uh, YouTube channel, okay? Uh, and they only talking about that, pro-Trump or pro-Biden. Right, right. It's a conflict is what sells from TV and the media. And if they have a like a boxing match, like a two, one against the other, it's easier to manage than to say all oh, the many <laughs> yes, opinions. Yeah, it's easy. And they, don't, they, sh they should understand that it's give advantage to uh, that guy sitting in Kremlin. Because right. he likes right. that when the country is divided yeah. and uh, they, they start to fight with each other, it's give him advantage. No, I agree. And so for the, for the second part of the show here, let's talk a little more about yourself as an artist, because I don't want to talk always about politics also. Uh, so you, you had lived in Russia, you, you divorced your wife. Uh, that's, but you were, I think you were in America and then back to Russia. That was an interesting chapter in your life. Isn't that correct? You, you, you were in, lived in America before you went back to Russia for a while with your wife. Yes, yes. I was, I was, I was living in the USA. Then I, I, I went there. I got a job. Then I get married, you know, and uh, that's what happened. And uh, I'm divorced now. But that experience I, uh, I got uh, working over there, you know, so I, I knew Russia now much more than if I never uh, used to live there. That's right. why I can't tell what people think. Uh, plus, I speak perfect Russian. Yeah. So I speak three languages. So yes. So I can I can make my own judgment on that. And as a musician, uh, you you that's been able to help you travel to a lot of places because uh, music is very international language so that and that's where you've been a professional musician most of the time when you lived in these other places i assume right yes yeah. I, actually i was orientated on music even when i start uh study music when i was seven years old and i was on influence of my father because my father was very great musician yep and he taught me a lot of things in terms of folk music armenian music you know this this discipline uh, you you, uh, you can't get in uh, even if you get a master's degree on music they're not teaching you to that you know because they're teaching you classical music and western uh, uh, classical music but besides that it's eastern music and they they implement a different uh, approach different technique and I learned a lot of things from my father you know David Irian his name David Irian. Yeah, like I said, he passed away uh, three years ago, and this is, uh, you know, uh, so I, I was on influence of my father most of the time. We used to play together. I was playing on uh, piano when he, he has a concert, you know, uh, touring in USA, Canada, and uh, so we went to a lot of places. And uh, is it possible for the viewers that we can now uh, put a part of some of your music into the show? So let's let's take a look at that for a second, then we'll come right back.
So we're back here with Gregory. Uh, and, and I also wanted to, I mean, the music's great, but we did want to also talk about how you've been a pretty prolific uh, short filmmaker. A lot of times you started out, I think it was year 2000 or so, uh, doing documentaries. Some of it's out on the street when you were living in Russia. Uh, it's some interesting stuff, some artistic stuff, kind of experimental film. So if you want to tell uh, the viewers a little bit about that, we can also uh, see some clips of it in a minute uh, and kind of see what your films have been about. Uh, sure, yes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, before I started making movies, so I came to the idea to start making movies, I, I, I was liking to see art, like so-called video art or art house movies. I grew up on those movies like Federico Fellini, you know, uh, uh, Serge Parajan, great Armenian filmmaker, then Tarkovsky, you know, Andrei Tarkovsky, then... Uh, uh, some French, uh, Jean-Luc Godard, he just passed away f uh, a few days ago, and so on. And I like silent movies, actually, Charlie Chaplin. That was I was uh, watching all the time since my uh, youth, you know, yeah. since my childhood. Right. So uh, I was always uh, watching Charlie Chaplin's movies. I liked them. So uh, 2000, you say right, yeah, in 2000, I started making my first uh, uh, films, independent films. So I started with documentaries. Uh, then I uh, did uh, uh, video video art films. Then I turned into experimental. And uh, let, later than that, uh, I started making experimental fiction films, short films. You know, they uh, I met uh, about all total i made probably about 20 short films include documentaries include uh, video art uh, music videos and fiction films yeah it sounds and you've played these uh in, in other countries and in america and is that something that uh do you do you love it as much as as, as music it's different uh, how does that compare to your artistry uh with your instrument yeah, I think it's music uh, most important things of any film, even short film or, or uh, fiction film. I think music is very important. Uh, that, that's the problem. You can uh, you can make a good uh, good film, but if it's not music not fit, then it's you ruin the film. So music is one of the most important things compared to uh, filmmaking. That that's my opinion, and not only my opinion. Oh yeah, but. Mostly what I did, you know, I, I have all freedom to, to do whatever I want because nobody tell me what to do, what, what because I, I was independent, completely independent. That's why maybe independent films is not what commercial films because there is a producers, the money, investment, and they can dictate what to do, how to do. So I got all freedom and I did whatever I, 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 I could do. Sure. Well, let's uh, let's give the viewers a chance to take a look at some of the films. So we'll we'll now go ahead and take a look at some clips from the films, and you can see the full films of these. At can you tell uh, the the audience where they can find all of your films? It's I know on Vimeo and on YouTube and. Ah uh, yes, correct. Uh, it's very easy to to get that films if you just print my first and last name on YouTube. Uh, you can get the link to my channel, you know, Gregory Irian, A-Y-R-I-Y-A-N. And that way you get to my channel, you know, you can subscribe to my channel and watch uh, music. Almost every day I play the music, even I'm using my phone, I play the music, you know. That's cool. And, uh, but besides that, if you go to popular uh, videos, you can, you can find a lot of things. And, and uh, we will link to that at the bottom of the screen. Uh, so let's take a look at some clips of some of those films. We'll come back. We'll wrap it up with Gregory. Uh, stick around for that.
we're right back here with uh, Gregory. So we're closing up, Gregory. Uh, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for your time. Uh, I think the viewers learned a ton about what's been going on yeah. internationally. And uh, just want to tell everybody what you're doing nowadays, and, and I think they're going to want to look you up on, on social media. What I'm doing, I'm doing the teaching job, you know, because of COVID, it's mostly it's online, online uh, teaching. I'm teaching violin and I'm teaching piano. Thank you very much, Gregory. Uh, I really enjoyed talking to you. Have a good afternoon, uh, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot, folks. Take care. Good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yep.